In the scientific understanding of the brain, neurons and the neural connections play the primary role. This is despite the fact that the brain of all humans, regardless of size, is composed of an approximately equal number of neurons and synapses. As such, the individual differences between humans, in terms of their intelligence and capabilities, could not be related to the size of their brain and the number of their neurons, all of which represent the quantitative aspects of the brain. This calls into question how neurons with the same quantitative characteristics would be responsible for creating and managing such infinitely vast and diverse qualities across the human race. The brain, commander or subordinate. In 2008, a paper was published in Nature that advanced an experiment conducted three decades earlier by Libet and provided an answer to the issue of unconsciousness. Haynes and his colleagues who conducted this experiment imaged the brains of 14 participants as they engaged in a decision-making task. When the researchers analyzed the data, it became clear that the first signal that the team could detect had started approximately seven seconds before the participants consciously reported their decision. Considering an accepted two to three second delay in imaging, the conclusion is that brain activity can begin up to roughly 10 seconds before a conscious decision is made. Therefore, according to science, Unconscious behavior occurs before and manages conscious behavior. Moreover, the scientific world claims that unconsciousness originates from a part of the brain's physical structure. This leads us into a cyclical sequence, neurons managing the behavior of neurons. According to scientific sources, neurons are essentially electrical instruments. Many channels are located in the cellular membrane that allow for positive or negative ions to flow in and out of the cell. An electrical signal occurs when the sum total of all excitatory and inhibitory inputs causes the neuron's membrane potential to change, reaching approximately minus 50 millivolts. This change in the neuron's membrane voltage is referred to as the action potential threshold. Thus, the action potential, or the electrical signal, is the fundamental unit of communication at the level of a neuron and initiates the communication process between neurons. Each neuron of the brain is part of an extensive electrical circuit that makes up the entire brain. Does the neural messaging mechanism of the brain explain the full spectrum of human behavioral potential and qualities? Can an electrical control circuit that functions like an intermediary tool used solely for transmitting electrical current and merely turning it on and off be responsible for insight, perception, thought, emotion, and similar qualitative phenomena? Is the binary nature of neural communication, on and off or zeros and one, consistent with the fuzzy, non-binary nature of complex human behavior and other advanced living organisms? Has the ability to create quality from quantity been provisioned in a distinct process within such a circuit? Can we realistically expect an electrical device create a personality, form an identity, or produce a human quality based on a programming that is strictly quantitative? How can the countless human distinctions from other creatures and the extensive and infinite spectrum of emotion, cognition, personality, and insight be considered the output of a binary, all or nothing, electrical control circuit of neurons. Is it not a gross oversimplification and a far-fetched idea to reduce all these complex capabilities into a simple neural action potential? 
Brain waves are created in response to sensory stimuli such as sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell, as well as stimulus-independent processes like sleep, hypnosis, and ultimately insight and intuition. In fact, the brain, due to the electrical nature of its message exchange, is responsible for shaping human behavior with any degree of complexity. Interestingly, recent research in the field of consciousness considers the existence of brain waves as a criterion for awareness and even seeks signs of it in other organisms, including plants and their intercellular communications. Additionally, Studies of microtubules and the quantum physics of consciousness attribute the generation of brain waves to a kind of quantum process at the level of microtubules. Considering the microtubule structure and its quantum subtleties as a strong candidate for creating consciousness. How can the existence of complex emotions like anger, love, and fear expressed to varying degrees in different individuals be possible by the simple on or off switching of neurons? If the brain's operations are based on fuzzy logic, what mechanism allows for this intricate emotional expression to occur? Also, in the nervous system, where 100 billion neurons are continuously interacting and communicating at every moment, which specific neurons initiate these interneuronal communications, and what part of the brain manages or oversees this complex process? In other words, how are the neurons initiating these continuous and targeted communications of the nervous system selected and managed at any given moment? Assuming the unlikely scenario that there is management at the level of neural communications, and taking into account the inner experience of the brain's system, how many instances of trial and error within the network of 100 billion neurons would have needed to occur throughout evolutionary history to allow for the likelihood of accurate and constructive communication between the neurons? According to scientific understanding, the hypothalamus serves as the command center. It communicates with the rest of the body through the autonomic nervous system, which oversees involuntary bodily functions such as breathing, blood pressure, heart rate, and the dilation or contraction of vital blood vessels and small airways in the lungs. This autonomic system is divided into two parts, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic system acts like a car's gas pedal, initiating the fight or flight response and providing the body with the energy needed to react to perceived threats. Conversely, the parasympathetic system functions like a brake, promoting rest and digestion and calming the body after danger has passed. It is evident that the scientific world attributes significant authenticity to brain waves and their determining role in shaping human sensory, psychological, and perceptual states as observed today. Now, questions arise here. Are brain waves the consequence of an individual's manifested states, or do they cause those states? Is it the brain's function to determine which waves and states will be dominant? And if so, how is this achieved and through what mechanism? How is behavior created and managed within an organ or system? And how does this management take place? What fundamentally is behavior and what are the different types? In the analysis of behavior, we must understand that in the process of manifesting any behavior, such as fear and the stress that arises from it, there are three stages. One, the initiation stage. Every physiological behavior begins with an encounter with a stimulus, which could be either internal, like a frightening memory, or external, 
like encountering a wild animal. It is at this starting point that the initial reaction of the brain occurs. Before the release of hormones, and the associated chemical reactions leading to a flight response. 2. The brain's preliminary behavior. Before an observable behavior such as fear is exhibited, the brain responds in accordance with previously ingrained experiences like past fears. This response is essentially a neural activity a combination of physical and chemical reactions that arises in complex, intertwined electrical circuits within different regions of the brain. This experience is categorized into two types. Species-specific experiences that are performed during human evolutionary process and individual-specific experiences formed by the individual's life experiences, which exist as neural connectivity established in various brain regions prior to the person's encounter with the most recent stimulus. The fears of primitive humans and modern humans are observed through the following explanations. 3. Final Manifested Behavior after the brain's preliminary reaction, specific regions of the brain send messages to secrete molecules related to the behavior resulting from the stimulus, such as adrenaline in this example. The adrenaline molecules are produced and the fear behavior manifests, shaped by both previous experiences and analysis of the present situation. This describes the scientifically accepted process of how a multitude of behaviors related to human survival form in response to environmental stimuli. However, several questions still linger. Which comes first, fear followed by the release of adrenaline or the release of adrenaline followed by fear? How could a single distinct pathway and finite number of molecules and chemical elements manage the infinite and diverse processes and behaviors in humans? Can this variation in the quantity of chemical molecules or the frequency by which the said pathways are activated be investigated? And is evidence of such research available? To reiterate, between the binary states of zero and one, or absence and presence of adrenaline, are there countless number of states where different amounts of adrenaline are produced, each delivering a unique message? Have these states been identified and documented by scientific research? After the amygdala sends a distress signal in a dangerous situation, the hypothalamus activates the sympathetic nervous system by sending signals through the automatic nerves to the adrenal glands. These glands respond by pumping epinephrine or adrenaline into the bloodstream. As epinephrine circulates throughout the body, it triggers several physiological changes. The heart beats faster than usual, pumping blood to muscles and other vital organs, which causes an immediate increase in pulse and blood pressure. The individual undergoing these changes also begins to breathe more rapidly. Small airways in the lungs are opened extensively, allowing the lungs to receive as much oxygen as possible with each breath. The absorbed oxygen is sent to the brain, enhancing alertness. Vision, hearing, and other senses are heightened. Meanwhile, Epinephrine causes the release of blood sugar and fats from temporary storage sites in the body. These nutrients enter the bloodstream, providing energy for all parts of the body. As the initial adrenaline levels drop, the hypothalamus takes over the communication with other glands to complete the stress response. Metaphorically, holding down the gas pedal as long as necessary to escape the crisis. Cortisol is secreted. When the threat is gone, 
the cortisol level subsides and the parasympathetic nervous system becomes the brake on the stress response. Today, the same mechanism is activated routinely in a stressful situation like work or traffic or any circumstances that exert psychological pressure, such as constant worry about losing a job or family-related issues. An interesting point about these processes and various responses is that all these changes happen so quickly that we're unaware of them. Current scientific understanding likens this to an efficient internal wiring system, where the amygdala and the hypothalamus initiate a specific molecular messaging cascade even before the brain's visual centers have a chance to fully process what is happening, as seen in the example. Researchers believe this is why, on many occasions, humans can react to something even before thinking about what they are doing. For instance, we may leap out of the way of a car that might hit us faster than we think. Once again, we are faced with questions. How is it possible for instantaneous reactions to occur even before we are consciously aware of them? Given the time required for biological pathways to produce and secrete chemical compounds and for the neural messaging to instruct our muscles to react. Considering the conventional mechanism of biological energy production with regard to the required amount of carbon compounds, the necessary number of mitochondria, and the steady rate of glucose consumption in neurons, is it possible for the energy required for all these processes to be supplied within the nervous system? The perception of sensations such as fear in humans is not uniform, but varies among individuals, extending far beyond mere personal and species experiences. For instance, the binary concept of fear has evolved to serve survival, transforming into various levels of fear perception throughout human life. This spectrum can manifest differently even between two people. It seems that what occurs in the brain's electrical control circuit is beyond simply fearing or not fearing, but relates to the individual's intellectual, personality, and existential dimensions. Following these previously answered questions, new queries emerge. In what part of the brain's quantitative and electrical control circuit can something qualitative like worldview emerge? In light of these challenges, is it not necessary to define a position that is distinctly independent of and different from the brain and its physical makeup in order to account for the broad range of human behavior and the countless qualities of interaction with the environment? 